What's happening, y'all? Alright, in the last video y'all know that it was like a wild day and we were really trying to get to fermenting our peppers for hot sauce and we just couldn't get around to it. So now we are actually doing that deed. Um, so I'm going to show you what we have, we'll walk you through a couple of steps. It's really easy because they got to ferment for a few weeks, right? Yeah. Ferment for a few weeks before we make the actual hot sauce, but this is the step to get in the right direction. So real quick, real easy, let's show you. So first off, we are not going to be making an overly hot hot sauce. So what is in here? These are roulette heatless habaneros. Uh, these are jalapeno, so that's going to be the max amount of heat that we have. And then it's mainly, there's a lot of bananas and gypsies in here, which are sweet peppers as well. So this is going to be a mild, a very mild hot sauce, which is what we like here. Um, but we have cut them, we have deveined them and de-seeded them. So we have a lot of peppers and now uh, Jen is getting our garlic ready. I almost called you Raylan. <laughs> I don't know why. I was wondering where you were going to call me. Yeah, I almost called you Raylan. Um, but yeah, she's getting the garlic ready because that's going to go in our jars. And we have some half gallons over there that we're going to be fermenting in. Alright, once you got your peppers done, you need to get your brine going. So she has 14 cups of water, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Where, are we guessing on how much we need here? I just lost track of how many else has been in because you asked me. 3.733. 3. So that is, it's a... The, Ingredients we're doing is that we're using basically 3.75 tablespoons Three. of salt. Four. There you go. 0.75. 0.75. <laughs> 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 A dash. By the way, if you're wondering if I'm wearing the same outfit as the last video, the answer is yes. Go ahead and dress the elbow of the room. I think 11 is fine. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, tell them what you're doing, babe. Okay. We're packing the peppers, trying to make, you know, make it look pretty and add equal amounts of colors. All right, we've got, what, three, four, five half gallon jars completely full, very pretty and one quart so we'll see hopefully all of this salt water brine because that's all it is salt water brine um fills up everything so we ready to do this babe yes okay i don't know what you said Lars. what'd you say i don't really remember okay. i think we're gonna put do this we're well, gonna put the salt water brine in there so there's garlic in there i don't know if you said they're not and then all of our peppers and now it's just one and a fourth teaspoons of salt per cup of water you heat it up, make sure everything's stirred together, and then you cover your peppers with it. And then we'll show you the next step yep. after that. Okay, once you got your brine, she's over here filling up the rest, and I'm moving to this one. That's not what I thought it was. <laughs> you want to get something here to help? That's not going to work either. I need a knife. <laughs> okay, we're back with what we really use. So, I don't know, now I'm gosh darn it. Okay, so you want to go in the sides and you want to try to get all your bubbles out. See how I'm doing that right there? <laughs> all right, once you have gotten your bubbles out, you want, ooh, ooh, oopsie, you want to put your weight on. So we are a little full, babe, because I don't know, the topping won't fit on it like that. Right row. All right, crisis averted. <laughs> what? <laughs> all right, once you get that on there. <laughs> You use your little fermenting lid, which this lid's pretty cool. Hang on, I can't do this one handed. All right, I know that that seemed difficult, but I promise putting a weight in here and putting the lid on it is not difficult, but it is finally there and finally on. And the, why they're called fermenting lids is because this lid's uh, basically is your burp. So instead of having to take the lid off and burp it every day, that allows that to evaporate from there. So you can just let it be. The weight keeps all the peppers. You do the same thing Raylan does. Uh, the weight does the keeps the peppers below the liquid, which it has to in a fermenting process. If it doesn't, then those are gonna get moldy. Um, so that weight makes sure that everything stays below the, the liquid. All right, they are all filled with their weights in. And the one thing I want to talk here before we get into actually making hot sauce is these are the fancy fermenting lids that are, they have dates and all that good stuff. They're awesome. 
not the cheapest route to take. So we have a lot of different ways you can do this. They're not expensive. No, they're not expensive, but if you don't have them and you're wanting to ferment right now and not have to wait kind of thing, uh, this is just a plastic lid. Now this one we will have to burp, so we'll have to take that top off with the air evaporate um, and then put the top back on. This is a different kind of fermenting lid. It just lays flat on there, you put the ring around it, and it keeps it sealed. Final option, if you don't have any of these lids, get you a coffee filter, put a band on it. The one thing is though, you're gonna to wanna to send it in like a tubbleware or something because this isn't going to hold that liquid. So as it ferments, you know, bubbles up, it could bubble out a little, some of that excess juice. So you just wanna sit it in something so you don't have stuff all over your counter. But this is just showing you there is a bunch of different ways that you can ferment. You don't have to just have these. Wow, that was a really quick month, wasn't it? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's always fun doing these very farm time space videos because yeah. um, for us it's been forever for you it's just been you know hopefully around 15 minutes <laughs> um, but it's been about a month um, since we started fermenting our peppers Yay. Um, and now today it is time to make hot sauce so hopefully you all took our advice and you started fermenting yours when we said so if not that's okay you have this full video here for you to be able to do it all over um, and it's now time to make it. Yeah, and even though like your peppers might be calming down in the garden, get you some from the store and try it. Yeah, it's absolutely. Good. This doesn't have to be garden fresh. It's yeah. always preferred, but not mm -hmm. necessary. Okay, so we have to be honest. This is the first time we've ever done peppers. We have fermented a lot of things. I do a lot of fermenting. Um, a few days into this, I came and we came to burp it, which was kind of scary. We should have shot on video. Um, uh, well, and hang on before you do that. So, like, these don't need to be burped, yeah. but, like, this one and this one did. Yeah. Because uh, we had them on too tight. All right, go ahead. So, they were bulging a little bit. So, that was kind of a scary situation. Um, and when we did that, we noticed that there was, like, a white film on some of them. Not all of them. And we were like, what the heck? What did we do wrong? So, it just took a little bit. We did a little bit of research. And it turns out that it's calm yeast. And it's perfectly fine. It happens a few days after you start the process. It's not mold. All you have to do is basically get it out, rinse it, rinse everything off, and then redo it, and it's just fine. So Not redo it. Use it. Yes. Use it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to show you that and show you what it looks like so that you can understand. No, that one doesn't have any. No, that, one. <laughs> that one's good. <laughs> one thing that's really cool that you can see is that they're still fermenting. See those bubbles? When you tap it, they come to the top, so that's really cool. And one cool thing about it, once you make this hot sauce, they're going to continue to ferment. Mm -hmm. This is a live uh, hot sauce. Yeah, so I don't know that you can tell it by the camera. Hopefully you can. It Honestly, I could see how it could be taken as mold, but it's not because it's a thin layer. It's not hairy or fuzzy. It's not like, you know, protruding up in some points. It's just a thin, flat layer. And honestly, you can even smell it if you get close to it. And I know you might be thinking we're crazy, but I promise, Google it. We're not just saying this. It's a thing, and you'll see for yourself. Um, but you can smell it, and it, it smells a little bit like yeast. Not yeah. too terribly yeah. hot. It smells really hot smell and it. good. You'll smell it. You'll smell it. <laughs> So really, really hopeful that you all did not throw yours out when you saw that. Um, if you did, it's okay. Redo. Now you know what to expect for the next time. Yes. Um, but like she said, it's just yeast, and it's actually a good thing to see because it actually is keeping the bad bacteria away. It's right. a good bacteria that's in there. All right, so what's our next steps? Okay, so we're going to drain it for the most part, but we're going to keep... We're gonna keep some. We'll probably keep, what do you think, at least this one whole half gallon, because you need about a cup. Um, per blender. Per blender, yeah. and this is a lot. So we're gonna right. keep a substantial amount. We might not need it, but at least we'll have it on hand. Um, drain it, we're gonna rinse them off real good, and make sure that we do get all that yeast off there, if there is any in the jar, but there shouldn't be, and then we'll go from there. All right, so our little setup here, we have another half gallon, we have our little green canning funnel, and then a strainer on top. Yep. So I'm just going to... The weight's pull. in there. Huh? The weight's in there. Yeah, I know, I'm gonna try to be careful with okay. it. Uh, just start pouring it until we get too low, and then I'll get the weight out and such. It smells hot. It smells real hot. And we didn't even use, <laughs> well, did we use some jalapenos? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm looking at them. <laughs> I'm looking at them. <laughs> it was primarily not hot. Uh, hey. There's the weight. Come, there's the weight. <laughs> Need to come out there's anyway. There's the heart. <laughs> <laughs> Need to come out anyway. Oh my gosh, I wish you I could smell yeah. these things. Got some jalapenos. Here, smell them again. Smell <laughs> Oh, that smells it so smells good. It smells so good. 
It smells so fresh. I love that's fermenting. That's basically all of it. Love fermenting. If you've never done it, do it. Okay, this one? Yeah, let's put a little bit more in here just in case. I don't Be think that we'll need more than yeah, that. Yeah, better to have too much than not enough. Quick update, we are not rinsing the peppers. Yeah, we said to get that. Yeah, because that's the fermenting stuff. And, and there's, no, there's no yeast or anything in there. So right, right. It's really like viewer discretion if it's something you want to do, but we're not going to. Yeah, we want it to stay alive. And so now we've got the blender out. So we're gonna start packing the blender and we'll do one for you all and then we'll power through the others. Yep. Once you finagle that and get it in there. Um, the whole point of this is you want this to be the consistency of the hot sauce that you're looking for. So we're gonna do a cup of the, the juice um, and we're gonna see how that does for us. Um, if it's too runny, we'll add more peppers. If it's too thick, we'll add more water uh, or more juice. So it's gonna be that simple. And then, so we're going to start out with adding no herbs. Um, no spices. No spices, yeah. Um, to like spice it up or anything. That's, you know, I just want to see what our peppers do. Right. Before we start adding too much flavor to it. Right. FYI, this is, I would not recommend doing this many peppers. There's a lot of peppers. It's going to make way too much hot sauce, so that's okay. I don't oh. know. And the thing is, you don't want to can it because it's a ferment, so... It's going to be good. Hot sauce. Well, and the thing about it is, yes, it has to be refrigerated. Sorry, I don't know if y'all can see this or not. Um, yeah, it has to be refrigerated, but it, it's going to last forever. Right? And I mean, it could be a good Christmas gift. Yeah, I say forever. Don't hold me to tongue but with not that. Forever. No, but <laughs> even though it's refrigerated, it's fermented and it's live, yes. um, so it can last a year. Mm -hmm. Let's say that. That's a that's a good general rule to go with. All right, so we have this. How do you say it? Oyster? Oster? Oster, Oster uh, blender. It had a food chop, so I did that at first, and then we moved it to high, and so we're just going to check it out and see what the consistency looks like. I think we're going to need to add a little bit of water. So that's what we're working with. It's a little thick, um, but oh my gosh, smell it. Mm. That smells so good. Should we try to taste it real quick? Yes. All right, taste test time. Here you go, babe. Mm. It's good. <laughs> it's very good. Um, it definitely needs to get down more to a liquid, um, and it needs some spices. Yes. Um, because it's uh, it tastes like a pickled mm -hmm. ferment kind of thing, you pickled know, right pepper. now. Yeah, pickled Which pepper. Which is what it is. Yeah. But that's why you add the spices and stuff. So I'm thinking a little cayenne. Do we have any, maybe a little garlic? Yep. Um, do we have chipotle? No. I don't think so. That'd be good. But yeah, all right, we'll be right back. All right, what are we putting in there, babe? Okay, so we're going to do some oregano. Is that some a tablespoon? Yes, but it's not a full tablespoon. Okay. I'm really just using that as a spoon. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> um, some paprika. Because it does need a little bit more spice. Yeah. Where we can use, like, mm. over-the-top hot peppers. A lot. That'd be good. I like use some cayenne. Where you at? There you are. This cayenne's ours. We did mm -hmm. that ourselves. There's the kick. I mean, I like it. I want it to be hot. <laughs> right, right. And some garlic and herb. Salt free. Salt free. For all you health nuts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, let's see what it does for us. We also added more peppers and another cup of juice if you use follow. All right, so as mentioned, you can do this as, as thick and as liquidy as you want. We were shooting for very much like a hot sauce. So as you can tell, we've got quite a bit of water. There's no major chunks in there and that is the style that we wanted for this round all right jen's got a little handy dandy bundle mm -hmm. no, we should transfer that to something else yeah. i don't know if that'll work we'll see. <clears throat> that always does Okay, so this is not 
and like what we're gonna get it out of when we use it. This is for, because we have a ton, we're gonna just be putting it in some containers and then we're gonna keep a main container in the fridge so that we can access it easy and then when that empties, we'll fill it back up from the reserve. Yep, and just one thing to note because this is a live ferment. If you're gonna seal it like we're doing, you have got to remember to burp it. Yeah. You're gonna build up pressure and then I go boop. Yeah, but these are good fermenting bottles. I yes. use these for kombucha. All you have to do is pop it off, it burps, seal it back, and they seal really, really tight, so that's good. Yep, the first batch is done. Isn't that pretty? Okay, we got like hot sauce masses everywhere. All right, so once you have blended it up as thin as you can possibly get it, and here's the one thing I'm gonna tell you. These folks that make it seem like they get their blender down all the way to liquid with those peppers and their uh, hot sauce, they lying. That ain't, that ain't happening. This is the step they do to get it down to actual liquid form as in like a hot sauce form. So we're taking that blended up mix and one more time we're gonna run it through a strainer and it's gonna like dramatically reduce the amount that you get, right. but that's good because yeah. As soon as we had, uh, you, you, you don't want, you don't want. We that. had over uh, probably about three <laughs> gallons worth of hot sauce, yeah. and it, you know it's not about that, but it's part of making something. It's kind of like when you make maple syrup; you have a bunch of it, right? right. Well, you can this, then you have a little bit. That's the same with hot sauce. But I'm telling you, you don't want these chunks mm -mm. in your hot sauce because I mean, if you're truly shooting for that, this is more of like a chow chow or relish, which right. is delicious. It's good. But that's not what you're shooting for. You want to drizzle on top of whatever it is that you're making. So yeah. just do this last little piece and then you'll get just the liquid with all that delicious flavor. I'm excited about it. So if you actually end up running out of some of the brine that your stuff has been fermenting in, and you can use water. So you can use the cool, just regular distilled water, but you can add some apple cider vinegar with the mother. So I think Bragg's isn't mm -hmm. Bragg's that brand. Um, and so you can throw that on top to give you that, that acidic taste uh, back in there. Did daddy make a mess back? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Sorry. <laughs> Apologies. Okay, so we ended up getting an entire gallon plus that little kombucha one. The kombucha one we actually kept with the chunks in it. Yeah. Um, so that way we can have a little bit more of a relish kind of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had these guys and then we put one in our squirter. So now ours is fairly liquidy because we did drain it all out. Um, now what you could do is you could add a little bit more back in to thicken it back up, however you want to do it. it it's your preference, whatever you want your hot sauce to be. We like ours to be a little bit more liquidy and just accent the, the flavor of the meat or whatever it is that you put on and give a little heat to it. Um, but you know, this part is super simple. Like it is the simplest part. Once you've done your fermenting, it's just literally blending it together and getting to the consistency that you want. Um, so I think a lot of people shy away because they're scared of fermenting, but you've looked a little bit, or you've done a lot of fermenting. Mm -hmm. Any words of advice to them? Um, just try it and it might not go right. It might end up bad. You could end up with mold or something. The chances of that are very low, but mm -hmm. you'll know it when it happens. Um, it's not like, you know, botulism or something right. where you don't see it and you don't smell it. You'll know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's actually a really good point. Yeah. There's no like secret killer. Right. You know? you, so, use your sniffer in your eyes. Yeah. I mean, even if it's something that you're just wanting to like start getting into preserving food or whatever, Start with fermenting because it's so easy. Mm -hmm. If it fails, throw it away, try again. Yep. It's fine. And I would say one of your easiest to start fermenting is sauerkraut. Yes. Doing cabbage. And Jen has done a video. I will link it down mm -hmm. below if you're curious into that. But that is definitely probably the easiest thing that you can ferment and make you some awesome sauerkraut. Yeah, you can ferment almost anything and yeah. it's so good for your gut health. Um, and if it's something like if this was interesting to you, let us know in the comments and mm -hmm. we'll try to do more. We do ferment a lot. We just don't always show it because we don't right. know if people are interested. Right. That's absolutely right. And, uh, you know, who doesn't love a little natural homegrown hot sauce? That's yeah. something that I don't feel like a lot of people can say they have in their pantry or their fridge that they grew and they made. So try this out. Exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, surprise some family members when it comes to, you know, holiday events and stuff like that. When you're having gatherings and you're eating out, bring it to your own homemade hot sauce. It's a different flavor. I mean, you can make it whatever works best for you all. Yeah. All right, y'all. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that below. We love you. Until the next one. Bye. Bye.